Okay, so we see these powerful relationships happening in sampling distributions for x-bars. We can see that their shape is becoming normal, their centers are always staying the same, and their spread shrinks as the sample size gets larger. That leads us back of course, to the central limit theorem, and these are the three outcomes of the central limit theorem. But the thing about the central limit theorem is that it's only available to us under a few conditions. There are a few requirements or conditions that have to be met in order for the central limit theorem to be validly used. Now, remember what a sampling distribution is. It's when we're taking a sample of size n, right? So that sample has to be randomly collected, right? We can't have a non-random sample. And this leads us to condition number one, right? Why is random such a big deal? Well, we learned back in chapter one that we want random because randomness protects against bias. And bias is always bad, right? Sampling bias is a big problem, right? So bias is bad in many aspects of life, including in this case, right? So we want our samples to be random so that they're not biased. All right, condition number two is a little weird to get your head around. So we want our observations to be independent. We want the sample observations to be independent of the population. Um, if the sample is collected without replacement, then the population must be at least 20 times larger than the sample size. Okay. Wait, what? So if you're collecting the samples with replacement, with replacement, um, without the word out in there, <laughs> with replacement means basically, I mean, if you're drawing numbers from um, a large drum, you put everybody's number back in every time. Everybody is just as likely to be called every time. That's very unusual for most of our samples, so we don't really talk about it. But if it's with replacement, you're good, right? Which is what I'm mentioning down here. Samples are always independent if we are sampling with replacement. So if we have replacement, no worries, right? If you're putting everybody's number in every time, no problems. But when you're doing it without replacement, when you don't put people's numbers back in the drum to be selected again, then you gotta be a little careful. Then you want it so that you're taking a smaller sample than 5% of the population size. Hmm. Okay, so we want little n to be less than 0.05 capital N. Right, why? Well, um, we want our sample size to be so small that it doesn't affect the rest of the population. Now, um, the, the easiest analogy I can give for this is my dog, <laughs> my dogs. So when I go to the pet store with them, if I'm not paying attention, I'm sitting there looking at, you know, some item and I see my dog out of the corner of my eye, ever so slightly and gently pulling a dog treat out of one of those open bins that's at dog level, <laughs> right? And I know what my dog is thinking. My dog is thinking, no one will notice this one treat <laughs> being pulled out of this bin, right? I mean, I'm sure if you've ever been into a bulk candy store or something like that, you might have thought the same thing, especially like as a child. You're like, no one will notice this little handful of M&Ms getting pulled out, right? Exactly. So you're, you're working on the same principle, that you're taking out so small a little bit that no one will notice it's missing. I myself personally have tried to do this with pans of brownies. I don't think it actually works. I think people know when I've taken out a, a very small brownie, but I think everybody in the, in the house notices, <laughs> right? So you, you want to take a sample size that's small, so small that it doesn't affect the population, but not so small that it's not a good sample right? So we have this weird tension between this one, right, where we want to take a small sample um, when we're doing it without replacement, and this one, right, because we want the sample to be large enough that it's normal. Now, if the population is normal to begin with, you can have any sample size you like. You can have sample size two, no problem. But if the sample size, is, or if the population skewed, then you need your sample size to be large, or if you don't know what it is, you need your sample size to be large. So just read this over again real carefully. Either the population distribution is normal, right? So if the population distribution is normal, then you're good, right? Then the samples are normal and everything's fine, right? Sample distributions are normal. Uh, 
But if the sampling distribution is not normal, if it's skewed, then you want your sample size to be large. Let me show you what I mean in the applet real quick. Let me go back to the applet. So let me hit on a normal distribution. So this is a normal population at the top. And if I do a sample size 2, right? Remember, 2 didn't look good for us in the last one. Here, I'll do 2 and 10. But look at it now. It's normal, right? It's normal for size 2. It's normal for size 10. It would be normal for size 5. Here, there. It doesn't matter. Normal, 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 normal. And that's the first sentence of this, right? So the first sentence is saying, if the population is normal to begin with, then you're normal, good. If it's not normal, if it's skewed, right? So I change this back to a skewed. If it's skewed, then two isn't gonna be big enough. Five isn't really gonna be big enough. That's still a little skewed right over here on the right. But once I start hitting 20 or 25, oops, let me do those in reverse, <laughs> 20 and 25, there, those are normal, right? It's getting big enough, right? And our rule of thumb is 30, right? It's not, it's not perfect, I, I will be honest, right? So, um, sometimes it takes less, sometimes it takes more. But for us, we're going to go with 30, right? That'll be our rule of thumb. All right, so... If these conditions are met, if it's random, if it's independent, which generally means your sample size is less than 5% of your population size. Oh, I should say that. Let me just relabel those. We learned them back in chapter one, but um, let me just rewrite them. So this is sample size, and this is the population size. Right? If your sample size is less than 5% of your population size, but still bigger than 30, right, then you'll be um, normally shaped, you'll have a center that's what we expect, and a spread that's doing this, right? So as long as it's random, less than 5% of the population, but bigger than 30, these three things will be true, which is great for us, because then we can use that to solve problems.